Hello, everybody. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you can hear me and you can see me and you can see the slides just fine. So feel free to, to put your comments in the chat and um, hello, hello, everybody. Um, Namaseya Diana Rodriguez, um, Danseya Sangat, Sinang Berada di Sini Bersamaan. Saya, saya, um, harapan da menyukai konten yang harus saya bagikan dengan anda hari ini. And, um, that's all I can do in, bah in Bahasa. <laughs> I'm trying. I, I I used to I used to live in in Malaysia and Indonesia, and it's one of my favorite places in the world. So I still remember some of some of the language. <laughs> anyway, today the title of our workshop is "Build a Customer Engagement um, Solution Through the Vonage Video API." Ooh, I just dropped something here, just so you see that these workshops are 100% live, and. I would like to in, I'd like to introduce um, Franz, who is going to be with us. He will have. Um, hi, Franz. Hello, Diana. Hi, everyone. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. <laughs> where are you? Where are you in in uh, at this moment, Franz? So currently, I based in uh, in Indonesia and in Surabaya. So if everyone uh, in Surabaya, yeah, we can have a coffee chat uh, to discuss about the video API. This is really cool APIs. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, Franz. And Franz is going to be with us. Um, he will be assisting with any questions you have. Any any. Um, Technical um, questions. We will both we will both answer your questions as as much as possible. And then my name is Diana Rodriguez, and I am a developer advocate. And I'm really happy to be here. We're going to do this workshop in a in a very cool way. And I put together a starter because it's important that you have some requirements. I just want to go through the requirements very quickly with you. Um, definitely it is great to be talking about Vonage, we're a cloud communications company and I'm really excited to introduce the, the video API. Um, we're going to be building an exciting solution. It's a, a conferencing tool with the Vonage video API. It's not going to look amazing because we're going to focus more on the the um, API aspect and making sure that our application works like a charm, but then we will have a starter to build on top and customize and style as as we want. So go to github.com forward slash super Diana forward slash API days dash Jakarta if Franz or Chloe can help me um, put in the link in the chat. And what we're going to do is, um, well, it's important that Node.js, that you have uh, NPM, and I'm assuming that all of us in this, in this workshop now have those, those basic things. Um, what we're going to do for, um, for this is, is kind of like a follow along workshop. So I'm going to be doing some live coding and we're going to follow along these steps. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. And it's cool. So the first thing we need, and I'm going to exit this presentation. The first thing we need is a video API, a Vonage video API account. I left a link in the in this repository and i have some instructions you can get your vonage video api account here and the only requisite i have right now is that you take this environment um, .env example file and rename it as 
www.ethereum.env and get your project API keys and secret. And I'm going to just show you very quickly how to create a project, provided that you already have a user um, in the Vonage API. We just go to projects, and then we can create a new project. And we have to select create custom projects. And then we're going to add a name. I'm going to add test. And we support two different video codecs, VPH and H.264. And depending your experience, um, we suggest that we choose VP8 and to not dive into the, um, the nitty gritty bits of why choosing what codec. All I can tell you is that for long conferences and for better video quality, go with VP8 over H.264. And this is going to work well with um, video files. And we click on Create. And then this is going to show us an API key and an API secret. And then those are the details. These, these keys that you see in here are going to be invalid um, right now. As soon as you see this, these keys are already <laughs> invalid. Like, we're going to invalidate them. Um, and then with these, you can paste them in your API key and your API secret. And we can get started. I'm just going to move this here. And I'm going to be opening my um, my code editor. I like VS Code. So what I'm going to do is to make this a little bit bigger, I'm going to increase the screen size so you can see what I'm coding. And I think this is a fairly fairly big. You can see the the terminal and you can also see the the um the ID. So first steps um first I created an API days directory and I opened it in a code editor and went through how to create a new Vonage Video API project and store the credentials in this .m file. It's the env example file that you have in here. What you have to do is replace your API keys and your API secret with the ones that are provided in your projects. So you only need to know a little bit of JavaScript. Like I said, we need to have Node.js installed. I use my um, IDE, my code editor is, is Visual Studio Code, but you need whatever editor of choice you have, Sublime or even Vim for those feeling adventurous. <laughs> it's important to have access to a terminal or command line. And we're going to use a browser extension called Postwoman to make our requests. You can install that on Google Chrome or Firefox and... Um, I, I'm giving you enough time to sign up. And um, yep, I'm just going to give you a, a little bit of time for you to sign up for the, um, um, the Vonage API. It's like if you can confirm that you have your Vonage API key um, and secret and that you have your accounts, it comes with a uh, $10 credits, which is going to be more than enough to do what we're going to do. And I'm actually really, really excited. If you need help um, um, installing the Postwoman, you can go to this URL in here. It's the Chrome Web Store, and you just go to Postwoman, and that's it. You add it to Chrome, and voila. I suppose that you all have the 
I count ready, if I'm not mistaken, so we can start, right? All right. Okay, so I'm going to show you this, this website here, the Video API Basics. Um, you can also go to topbox.com forward slash developer forward slash guides forward slash basics. Let's, let's start with some terminology. Every video call is called a session. And each session has a number of clients. It could be a phone or a computer that are connected to it. Each client may subscribe to a data, a data stream. And it's something like watching TV. You can watch, but you can't interact with it. And clients can also publish a data stream, which is happening right now in this, in this particular workshop, which is what you would do when you send your video, your video stream or your screen to a call. So this is really cool because your server can create new sessions in the OpenTalk cloud. It can also create special keys required for clients to connect. And your clients ask your server for a key called token, excuse me, and the server has to respond with an OpenTalk cloud session ID and a token that will only work for a short period of time. This token will provide access to the session and it will also describe the role of the user where they can only subscribe or where they can subscribe and publish. Say, for example, um, a good example would, would be if you're in a conference, um, call it in a conference um, app, then if you have a, an attendee role where you can only receive the stream and if you have like a speaker role, you can receive the stream because you, you can see everything, but you can also publish. Let it be, share your camera, share, share your screen, etc. Once the client has the session ID and the token, it can connect directly to the OpenTalk cloud. And then the role of your server is completed, which is basically this graphic that you see here. And then you will see the, um, the detailed information that uh, we discussed right now and all the meaning of the key terms that I mentioned. So let's do something cool and let's get set up. Now, uh, one important thing, which is why I don't show my .m file, um, you can't and you should, well, you can, right? But you should never share your keys. So to make sure that they're not exposed in our repositories. We create an entire file just for them. And these files can't be published, which is why I gave you this particular one. And I know that it may seem a bit silly of me reminding key concepts, but it's important, important in all stages. Also, make sure that you have a, a .git ignore file. Well, I'm providing it in the template where we basically tell get not to commit this kind of file to our public repository. Um, now, we're going to use NPM. Um, NPM basically contains thousands of packages that other developers have written, which we can include in our JavaScript projects. Our own Node.js client is available through it, like right now. But instead of including tens of thousands of lines of other people's code when we share our project, we can store the packages we want in a package.json file. Developers can then install the full packages using just this one file as a reference um, of what to download. So we're going to go to our terminal and we're going to type npm in it oh and 
we have a package.json file. So it basically is the name of, of um, <laughs> the project, the description. Well, I, I had an interesting description in here because it took it from the readme file, but we can change this. Uh, we don't have any tests or anything of um, sorts. And I have an older version of NPM, as you can see, and I should update it sometime soon. So NPM installing these packages, they will be downloaded and referenced in our package.json file. Um, Express JS is, is one of the packages that we're going to install. So I'm going to go through the packages that we need. We need, so we're going to install in this projects uh, docs env, and this is to read our env files. Express net, oh, net b and open talk. And I'm going to explain. If you need me to type slower, please let me know. I'm going to explain the packages. Um, Express JS is a web application framework for Node. NEDB is a simple file-based database, super friendly. It's not suitable for anything serious, but it's kind of like uh, the document format of um, Mongo, MongoDB. So moving to that later, if you want to migrate to MongoDB, it's not a good, it's not going to be a, a big step for you. And then the OpenTalk node client, it will give you an easier way to interact with our uh, video API. So we're going to do this, and it's basically installing everything we need. And let's check our package.json. And I'm going to change the description because this looks ugly. OK. Amazing video API app. And I saved it. And then we'll see that it included our repository. Um, and then it shows the packages that we installed as dependencies with their versions. So I'm going to wait for you to install your dependencies before continuing. And I need a confirmation that everything is, um, that everything is, is installed properly. To just give you a, a couple of minutes. If you have any issues, please let, let us know. There's Franz in there and there's Clarice as well. And if you have any questions, like Franz said, feel free. Go ahead. Yep. So everyone, if you have any questions, you can uh, feel free to ask me or ask Diana. You feel free to use Bahasa Indonesia uh, or you feel free to use English as well. So if uh, Diana is too fast, then please uh, tell us, Diana, please slow down or something. All right. Yeah, I get super excited, so <clears throat> I just like it too much, right? Okay, now that we have our dependencies, we're going to, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to open a new file in the same app directory, and we're going to call it index.js. And this is going to be our main file. So this line, I'm going to add um, the first line will be require. Docs M. I love, I love how uh, Visual Studio Code <laughs> auto completes things. Require dot M. So, config and so this line loads our .m file so we can access our variables like our API key and our API secrets and then I'll show you how we do this later. 
And actually, you know what? I'm going to put a comment. Right. And then we're going to include and initialize whenever I can type property, properly initialize express. And we're going to use const because const is used as a variable which won't be changed. So because we're not going to change this variable, we're going to require express. Right? And then what we're going to do here is start our app on port 3000, which is pretty standard. And for that, we're going to write app.listen 3000. I'm going to throw a little bit console log to tell us that node is running. So we're going to add node app now. Oh. Now running. And that's it. So we're going to save this and we're going to test that our app is actually working. And what it's going to do is show us in this console, in the terminal, that the app is running. So I'm going to run node index.js, and let's see the results. Node app now running. I'm not, um, we're not giving, um, this, this, this isn't a given terminal prompt um, as this application is going to run until it crashes or until I end it with control C, which is what we're going to do. And we got our first step covered, control C, and it stopped running. I'm going to clear this so we don't um, have visual closer. Now we're going to do something really cool. We're going to serve front-end views. So our web application will have a number of endpoints, which each contain a path, such as, I don't know, forward slash hello, or forward slash uh, name slash Diana, and a method. When an incoming request matches the path and the method, then this function is run. There are a number of support set methods. Uh, the most common ones are get, which just requests data, and post, which generally is used when data is being created as a result. All these endpoints should send a response, whether that's a success or an error response with or without data. So what we're gonna do now is to build the get endpoints, which the browser will use to request the web, the web page. But before that, we need the pages that are going to be served. So we're going to create a folder in here. And we're going to call it views. And inside that folder, we're going to create a file. And we're going to call it index.html. And I am in that file. Is any of you not in a um, in a code editor? Is any of you, oh, sorry, doing it directly in the console? I have a um, an insulin pump and it was pushing insulin and it kind of hurts. I think we're okay, right? Cool. Okay, so we're going to create our first view and we're going to do 
I'm gonna quickly do the basic H1. And accession. And we're gonna add a form to register the session. So we're gonna call it form ID. registration and then we're going to add a label session name form field like an input it's going to be text is going to write and then it is going to call session and then a submit button my typing skills today are amazing. It's 10.45 p.m. in here, submit. We're done, we're done with this, and we can save that. And we're gonna go back to our index.js And just above the app dot listen statement, we're going to write a following code. So, okay, the app dot get is a method which belongs to our express instance, and the first argument is the path. And that's by which basically denotes the home path. The second argument is a function that um, should have two parameters. The first parameter is requests, and it contains all the data made as part of the request. And the second one is to prepare and send the response. And we're going to add response in here. And then what we're going to do is send back the file, which is relative to index.js, add views, uh, forward slash index.html. So it will be response. Send file. And we're going to add the directory. And that's going to be views index.html. And that's it. And we can save. Then, if we test our application, we're going to run node index.js hmm. let's see that's why i'm going to see our problem here uh, it's expecting a I comma forget the close bracket diana in the re response over there Oh, I didn't close the. And you need right. to move the one in line 12, I think. The one in line. I am so blind. Yeah. Definitely. 12. Yeah. 
So just need to remove one closing brackets and you are done. Thank you. What would I do with a little bit from my friends? So anyway, yeah, we should be able to run it. This happens in the best families and this is expecting a comma in here, which is interesting because it should be. Uh, um, you have typo on the function. Function. Yes. See? Thank you, friends. What would I do without your eyes? And I have like the biggest te text. Okay, so the app is now running and I can go to localhost. Man, and this is what happens when you spend all day um, coding. Hang on a second. Yeah, this is running. 3,000. Bear with me. So, yes, everyone. Uh, jika ada pertanyaan, uh, silakan uh, masukkan pertanyaannya di kolom chatting sana. Jika ada yang terlalu cepat, bisa bilang uh, untuk lebih slow down, slow down lagi. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I do have um, a couple of security setups that don't allow me to run localhost 3000. So, I'm going to change browser to the one that allows me to do so. Apologies for that. This is what happens when you run um, too much Python and too many environments in a single um, computer. But anyway, this basically serves the app that we see and it's, and it's serving the um, the form and we're just gonna carry on and we can create the rest of the views I'd like to know what are the results from your oh with 300 line 13 thank you see <laughs> thank you so much three but I still have to fix Security settings. Uh, different browser, but you will see in here. It's okay. That's what you will see. Session name and a submit. Apologies for that mishap. Okay, so I'm going to stop this application and we can carry on. What we're going to do is create another view um, in the views folder. We're going to create a new file and we're going to call it session. And friends, if, if there's anything in the chat, I'm not looking at the chat right now, so please let me know. And anyone who feels free to um, share voice as well, please feel free. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the other participants' video streams. So what we're going to do is just give it a quick header, and I'm going to um, make it faster. And I already had that header. And then we're going to add a div for the subscribers. And we're going to add another div and we're going to call it publisher. So that's where the streams are going to go. And um, we have to create a new endpoint. Um, bear with me. We're going to create a new endpoint. I'm having some connection issues. Can you can you hear me?
Can you hear me okay? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So what we're going to do is create a new endpoint, and we're going to create a dynamic um, route. We're going to go back to our um, application. I'm going to create a new route. And this is getting exciting. So go to app.git and the route is going to be session. And then name and parts of, of a route that start with um, a column mean they are dynamic. So this endpoint uh, will work for like session Diana, session hello, session name, and so on, right? And we're going to add a function, making sure I don't do any typos. <laughs> making sure I wasn't doing any typos. I'm going to add a little console log. And this is going to be um, the name and then, whoopsie. And then we're going to send this again. The name. Let's use. HTML. I'm trying to look at the screen for any chats or anything. Um, perfect. Perfect. Look what I did. Amazing. You get too excited and start doing typos. Perfect. Let's check that I've got. Everything here. Mm -hmm. That's correct. So I know I've been messy with the semicolons. Up to you. So at this point, we can test our application again. So we can restart the project and run again node index.js and Again, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm not seeing. Can you see my screen properly, Franz? Because I don't have clear resolution here. I'm going to have to kill so my, it's quite my stream here. because I have. I only have one screen. So I'm trying to look at both. And this is slightly smaller. So... Quite okay from my side. I, I, I can see your screen. You can see it yes. perfectly. Okay. There I think from the audience also, uh, they can see your screen. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to clear here. Perfect. So if you um if you run your application and visit localhost forward slash session forward slash hello and look at your terminal you will see a log and if you do goodbye it will log in your terminal as well but it's easier now if we go to the bottom of index.html HTML and we add 
code to allow users to go to a session page from, from the home page. And what we're going to do is add a script tag. I know I have a typo, so I don't want to waste your time with typos at the moment. We'll get, we'll get to check that very soon. What we're going to do is store the reference from um, to the form element, and we're going to add the following. element by ID, and we're going to start with registration. And that's the form that has the ID registration. Uh, and we have to uh, trigger some code when the form is submitted, which is known commonly as an event. So we're going to add an event listener. Form add event listener on submit. And then the event details. And details. And then in here, we're going to stop the default behavior to refresh the page. Event details, prevent default. There we go. Then we're going to update the URL of the page to forward slash session and then the value of the text box. So, your location, uh, path name, and update to session. Elements and session and value. And that's it in our scripts. So right now that basically when you update index.js, you have to restart the server and I'm gonna look at what typo I have in index.js right now. Um, and then we can visit localhost directly. Um, we're gonna type something into the box and submit and we'll note the URL change. Because I've been coding for 12 hours now, which is exciting. I'm gonna check where is my little Mistake. Da, 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 da. Is this Linda going insanity? No, oh, never mind. Let's carry on. Right. So at the moment, so, so far we have just uh, basically set up an express application. We um, allow this to serve the front end views. I'm gonna check. I miss a single quote on the path. Thank you, I appreciate this. And the path. I appreciate this, my friends. Do I miss a single path, single quote in the path? Hmm. Checking that. I apologize. Is 
making sure I don't have the same typos issues right now. But yeah, that's after 12 hours of coding. I'm, I'm actually very proud of it because we have some awesome features coming out and we've been working super hard to make sure that you've got the best experience very possible. Number yes. Seven. You what was that? The yeah, number six. 17. Closing brackets. Yes. You forget to add the closing bracket. Closing brackets. Oh my goodness. I apologize for this. The the when you're tired <laughs> and excited at the same time, it's like we overlook we overlook single things like semicolons or commas or dots or brackets and i'm gonna check right now my screen mm, having a bit of an issue accessing this um at the moment okay bear with me when a demo gods attack your screen and you can't even scroll to your own screen. Here we go. Line 17, you said? Can't see this. Anyway, it's okay. I'm going to look to the screen as... Um, yeah, that's cool. That was the idea. Um, we just wanted to get a more interactive experience where people can actually see how the files are generated and, and have like a more one-on-one um, -on -one session anyway. Um, let's move on to the next... Um, so next step, and we'll take care of it, you'll have access to Starser as well. What we're going to do um, basically is um, to scaffold the main endpoint, and we're going to do so right now. So when you see um, our HTML page in the browser, is that's a client for our application. As, as we mentioned earlier, the client has to have a session ID, um, an API key and a token to connect to the OpenTalk cloud. So we have to build an endpoint to provide that data to the client. So this endpoint will create new sessions and store the session name and the ID. And then the client will refer to the name and will return the ID. And then we also need to keep track of existing sessions so we don't keep creating new sessions with the same name. So for this, and I'm going to have Franz uh, look in, a, in an interactive way. Um, before I start sharing secrets, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second and move to a new monitor very quickly. And Fran can um, go through um, questions if you have anything at the moment. I'm just going to change my screen so I don't have any more issues with viewing things that are not displayed correctly on my side. And you can see them, but I can't. Bear with me for a second. Go ahead, friends. Uh, yeah, 
So I think just a recap a bit uh, what Diana did is uh, we already create a function that uh, just the HTML. We have we even haven't touched the our open doc, which is our open doc is super simple. It's few lines of code only. So maybe Diana uh, after this Diana will will continue uh, maybe uh, quickly to the our uh, open doc library how to use our open doc JS to you uh, to stream out to stream the the video uh, to have a basic video chat uh, application using open doc API. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, raise the questions. I I can see Albert. Albert C, uh, thanks for your uh, suggestion. I think, uh, what do you think, Diana? Uh, are we going to put our complete code in the GitHub? Yeah, we're going to put our complete code in the GitHub. That's um, what I will have. I'm just going to quickly ship this and go through the, um, the steps. What we're going to do quickly is get the NetDB uh, library. Um, and before our endpoints, we're just going to do a quick require when we ship this, um, or we can actually ship it from, from here. I have a repository ready and bear with me. What I'm going to do is stop sharing my screen for a second so I can move to the actual screen. And yes, we're gonna share the GitHub uh, once we finish the workshop over here. So don't worry about that. Uh, in the GitHub itself, it is uh, self-explanatory. So we already put comments uh, in the GitHub so you can uh, do. And if any questions, I'll support you to help you if you have any questions. Of course, you can uh, post your questions on the Stack Overflow or you can contact our support team as well. Perfect. I'm basically shipping this to the repository. I'll be in a second. Um, in the meantime, We should be seeing this very soon. I apologize for the technical um, difficulties that I'm experiencing with my local connection and everything. Uh, I'm actually gonna share the post story with you in a moment. I think you should see me better. And now I do have access to scroll in the screen, how to plug in an extra monitor. Um, I apologize again for the last minute mishaps that, that we're gonna do. Um, so let's go very quickly, just above the endpoints, what we're gonna do is uh, quickly create a new database. Wow we're going to do for the endpoints just right here. And what we're going to do is um, create a new database. We're going to call it sessions.db um, and it's going to load when our applications start. And then what we're going to do with this is quickly create um, a post endpoint that returns a string and it is a different endpoint than um, the git um, strings. Uh, so if I, I'm just going to skip a couple of um, couple of steps. Bear with me. Just a couple of steps and add the endpoints Bear with me I'm actually having more issues and now at the moment if you also see the reason why 
Oh, I can see now what's happening with me at the moment. I have type 1 diabetes and these things happen live. And I am extremely, extremely high in blood sugar. And I have to take care of that at the moment, which is why I wasn't making sense. Um, and I apologize. Um, Albert has a very interesting question, Franz. If you can um, jump with Albert and I will be back um, in two seconds. Just yeah, of course. So... Results. Insulin. All right. So I think uh, the first questions uh, from is uh for one minute recording what is the file size generated by phonics so it, it is it, it depends right uh i mean the, the file size is quite uh, video quality itself so for the 720p recording so uh it usually it, it only takes maybe a few megabytes only for one minute recording but uh depends uh, let's say you have like five participants or maybe 10 or 20 participants uh, in the recording itself so the the file size can be uh, really relatively high and it, it will the answer it depends uh, what I, what is the recording what is the bit rate and and so on quite quite a lot of the parameters for that and how do we uh, protect the confidentiality of the recorded video so basically uh, in the phonics itself right uh, we only save your recording for 72 hours so after the 72 hours uh, you will not able to download uh retrieve your recording again so in that case how we protect the confidentiality but uh i can after this i can share you a link how, how are we how we protect the recorded video and if you want to uh get your recorded video uh, I mean, if you don't want to use our uh, phone uh, storage to uh, store your video, you can use uh, any S3 compliance or Azure uh, to to uh, move the recorded video from uh, the phone server to your own uh, storage server. And of course, we have end-to-end uh, -end encryption as well uh, for the video. So don't worry about that. Uh, also for the recorded, uh, we have uh, AES uh, encryption as well. And and uh, the next question: How to share the recorded video to certain people and protect it from the public access? I think uh, Phonis will uh, will just uh, will just uh, start uh, making the the recorded video, but uh, I think uh, but I think after that <clears throat> after that. Uh, how you share is uh, depends on you. So Phonix will, will generate you the URL, the let's say only like 10 minutes URL. Then after that, uh, you need to uh, uh, manage your own, uh, what's that? The, the URL. All right, so I think uh, Diana is uh, offline now. Uh, we have uh, something, uh, yeah, uh, she has something urgent, so I think uh, we'll take over from here. Uh, let me prepare the environment first. Uh,
All right, guys. So, yep, uh, we are back over here. Uh, let me continue. So, uh, let me uh, make the font bigger. Uh, right. So I think uh, Diana stopped uh, when uh, we can uh, we, uh, we stop uh, out here. So basically, uh, let me recap. So uh, we already create the, the HTML file uh, to, for the for the index and then for the session. Now uh, now is the time where uh, we are we need to uh, when we enter the session name uh, we we will we will create a new session. So to do that, uh, let me uh, create some uh, some uh, credential first uh, for the API key. So that <clears throat> right. So uh, first we need to uh, we need to have an open talk library, and then after that uh, we. Need Open talk. We have API key and API secret itself. So uh, I think uh, you, you you need to get the API key directly uh, from our Talkbox uh, account. So you can uh, go to the Talkbox.com and then phonets uh, uh, ID. Then uh, you can register yourself. Uh, I believe you already registered before. And after you get the API key and ABC script, then after that, uh, you just need to put it in the .env file. Then uh, if you've already finished uh, to create that, uh, let's add uh, some function to create a session. Uh, so you can, you can uh, put it over here. So I have a function to create a session where uh, this, this is a simple create a session. So it will it will it will help you to create a session. So whenever you put uh, the session name, uh, you will uh, you will create a session over here, and then after that, <clears throat> we need to change our function of uh, for in here to the async function, and after that, uh, we just change this one uh, to here. So uh, whenever I, I hit this endpoint session slash the name of the session, I create the session, and then I, I can I can I can just console log the session ID. Then after that, I need to save the session in the database. So maybe I can do this. Uh, so here, uh, I, I save the session in the session, in the database. Just in case, uh, let's say I enter the same name, I will not create a new session. So I will just I, I will just use the existing session uh, for this one. Then let's see uh, what happened if we restart the server, and then uh, let's see if I can access it for here. Right. Um. Maybe before I I show you how to access it, uh, we can finish the code first. So uh. First, uh, after that, you need to. Uh, we already finished, right? Uh, when I enter the name, uh, then I, I, after that, I create a session. Then I insert the session in the database, and then after that, I go go back to the. I return the session to HTML. So the session that the HTML is just a. This is just a plain HTML. We have a div ID, subscriber, and publisher. So what is publisher? Publisher is you. You are the one that publishing the video, and subscriber is uh, maybe. Uh, any participants uh, that uh, that you are subscribed. So we just need to put these two placeholder. First placeholder is subscriber, and the second placeholder is the publisher over here. So uh, the next step is uh, we want to make sure that uh, existing session will use the same session ID. So uh, let's search for the database. So. There you go. So we can, we can, so we need to search first. So I, I can use this one. So session find the request, the, the name of this one. And then after that, uh, I can, I can use this. Uh, if I, if I find something, if I find something, then I just return the document. If I'm not finding anything, I create a new session. So in that sense, I, 
I don't need uh, any more this code. I just uh, remove this code uh, from the from the from the function. So going back, so when I hit this endpoint, I will find first in the database whether I have the name, uh, I have the session with that name or not. So if I have the session, then uh, I will just uh, I will just use uh, I will just use the existing session ID. If I don't have it, then I will just uh, remove it. Uh, yeah, I will just uh, I, will, I will just remove the, the the session. So in that case, uh, we don't need this uh, async anymore here because it is not async anymore. But we need the async over here. So we just move the async from line forty five to line forty six. Don't worry if I'm I'm going too fast. Uh, we already uh, have a GitHub repo repo for you, so you can uh, you can download. And then you can learn. Uh, we have a lot of comments over here. So just we already create a session. So uh, this is how OpenTalk can create a session. You just need a simple function to create a session. Let me scroll, scroll up over here. So to create a, a session, you just need to call the OT the create session over here. It will return you the session. And of course, after creating a session, I think uh, the next step we need is to create a token. So uh, if uh, if you already have the session, and then after that, uh, you need, uh, you need to create a token, right? So we can put it over here. So before, um, okay, we can put it. I think we can put it over here. So just, just after we get the session ID, we create the token. So the role for this token is the publisher, and then the data is the room name request or param name. So, so components that you need to know uh, how to use our open docs first is the session session is just a room name like if you go to uh if you go to conference this is your room name and the token is uh something a key a key to identify yourself so uh let's say uh my name is Franz. so this is this token belongs to france it doesn't belong to anyone so this token is the key to go inside the session so uh, on the last one, uh, we have response over here. So we have response uh, send file. Uh, so after we get it, so we just uh, return the just return the session ID token and the API key, and we just need to uh, restart the server. So the overall function uh, will uh, look like this one. Uh, whenever you get the, the session name, uh, you, first we, we search in the database whether we have the session or not. If we don't have, we create a session. If we have, we use this existing session ID. Once we get the ID, uh, we generate the token itself. Uh, yep. And after that, we send the, the token, uh, the session ID token API keys uh, to the HTML itself. And Next is itself. So uh, we are going back to the session.html. So where is it? We're going back to session.html. And we just put a script over here. So we use a location path name and then uh, we this this fetch function will uh, will help you to retrieve the session ID token and then API kit that we just created before. And after that, uh, we retrieve the, the 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 response, right? The the API key. Then after that, we initialize the session. So this code is for the client side. So not not the not the server side. The, this code is for the server side. So the server will create the token, will manage the token, will manage the session. And this client side will uh, just uh, get the session ID and then uh, make the publisher. So I just create a publisher over here, make the session. So everything do do with client like uh, publishing and subscribing is on the client side. So uh, I already received the API key session ID and then I just initialize the publisher. And then after that, I, I connect. So. The, the disconnect function require me to use the token. So this session, so I already initialized the session. So I'm saying that, okay, I want to enter this uh, this room. 
So to enter this room, you need to provide the token. So once I enter, this is the callback. Once it is connected, so once it is connected, then publish my video. So, uh, so what happened uh, after I connect? Or maybe okay when, when I already connected. Maybe uh, when the event. So we the session is that in the room itself. There is an event like stream created, stream destroyed. So you just think of you are in the room, right? Someone come in that you have stream created. So what happened when stream created? So uh, you need to subscribe to the stream in the subscriber placeholder. So uh, yes, I think we are done over here. So you have subscriber. You just put it here. This is a placeholder. Open top will help you to generate the video uh, to connect to use the web RTC uh, connection and then to provide you the video elements uh, page over here. So uh, let me stop sharing my screen and I put my credentials. Where's the credentials over here? All right, I already put my credentials and let me uh, restart the server and test it out. So, share the screen. So, this is the, the session name. Uh, I just entered the session name and just click submit. It will redirect me uh, to, let's say, Sessions uh, France. So it will uh, redirect me to a session first. Uh, I think I missed something over here for the redirections. Oh, I think I forget to restart the server. Did I? Station first. So yep. Uh, once it is connected, then I will I will be able to uh, see my video. Let me see what happened over here. Press. Oh yeah, I forgot to restart the server again. Sorry. My server. All right, so yep. <clears throat> so right now you should able to see where's the Lines of
All right, so sorry about that. So I, I put the library for the client. So over here in the screen, this is my the publish. This is publisher screen. So when I open my second window, you're able to see my subscriber screen. So mute this one. So uh, yep, this is published. So wrapping up. We'll share the the GitHub uh, repo repo in the in the chat below. So uh, right now, from uh, the workshop itself, you are able to see how easy to create the video uh, chat apps. Uh, first, you just need to create a session, and then after that, create a token uh, itself. So I think to wrap up, it's uh, to wrap up. Uh, we are we are going to share uh, uh, the use case of our video API. Uh, let me uh, share it, the YouTube video. So, can I put it correct? From improved operational efficiencies, better patient outcomes, and more affordable healthcare, programmable communications are transforming the modern healthcare experience through APIs. Look at how over just a single day, Vonage's video authentication, voice, and messaging APIs optimize complex patient-doctor interactions seamlessly and efficiently. Then, an avid tennis player is experiencing a reoccurring pain in his shoulder and is considering surgery. He remembers his healthcare provider now offers virtual consultations. After downloading his provider's app,
All right, guys, thank you for attending the workshop. So uh, we are sorry we have a bit of technical glitch uh, or something urgent uh, in the workshop, but I hope uh, I answer all the questions. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach us in the phonage support. All right, then uh, thank you very much for your attention.